morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to my channel, whichever great part of this planet you're in right now. Thank you for stopping by. My name is Nelson, you're watching Nature Now. And today's episode is very special. <laughs> it's very different from what I've been doing in the past. So you guys will want to sit and watch this. Apparently there's some weird weather patterns happening and Florida got really, really cold. We're down to like high 30s, which I know for you guys up north, I lived in Chicago. I know when I would hear that when I lived over there, I'd be like, that's summer. No, not here. <laughs> Once your blood thins out, this is not a place you want to be in the cold. But besides that, we had to save the orchids. Hashtag save the orchids. I found out that it was going to go down to the 30s. Now, when it goes down that low, the cells in your orchid kind of like just die off and it just it's not good for them. So anything that's in bloom or in spike, it's just going to go downhill. And I had a lot of stuff in bloom or have a lot of stuff in bloom and I have a lot of spikes and I was going to do a what's in bloom. But unfortunately, it will have to wait till possibly next uh, Tuesday or Wednesday. That's when they said it's going to warm up. So without further ado, I like to show you exactly what I did to save the orchids. See you inside. I want to start here because for you guys that follow me, um, you do remember this wall. And of course, you guys know Simba. He's always front and center. Um, this is a wall, my grid wall. This is where I keep all my hanging orchids and uh, well, some of my hanging orchids. I also have another wall I'm going to show you now. But this is how empty everything looks. It looks so sad. It looks like somebody came and ransacked my place. <laughs> Inside my greenhouse, nothing's hanging. I have nothing on display. I only kept like the bonsais I know do well. They're not going to be hurt. And my other plants, my begonias. And uh, I just noticed, look at this. This is my uh, bat plant. Now that show, tells me it needs water. I didn't water it yesterday. They do like a lot of water. So I'm going to possibly water it later this afternoon when it warms up a little bit because I don't want to really shock it or damage um, anything. But when you see leaves like this on a bat plant, it needs water. So it's not dying or anything like that. It just, it's thirsty. So as you can see, I have nothing Everything has been emptied out. I only left, you know, like my queen of the nights. And these three, I kind of like left them there to test. They've never bloomed for me for years. I've had those. So I figured, let's see how they handle the cold weather. And then my dendrobiums, they're kind of rooted to the pole and it's just a little difficult to pull them out of there. So those are the only ones I kept plus my, um, arachnus that's over there by the tree i cannot move that into here so let's go ahead and check out how my orchids are doing so they're inside here i'm gonna shut off the phone for a second because i am flying solo today i have no help well i have my other cat here you guys that haven't met him his name is patrick hey patrick now, patrick is thirsty I know they kind of all look alike, right? <laughs> so anyway, let's go inside and see how the uh, blooms are doing. All right, and through the magic of editing, voila, the door has opened. <laughs> so check out all my orchids. Pretty much everything I own is in here. So this is what it looks like. I had no idea what they look like all together. And I, it may look like they're all thrown on top of each other, but they're not. Everything is laid out strategically in order of where it came from. Uh, my cat Patrick has to be going through Discovery Cove right now. <laughs> and so I created, as so you can look on top, I need to do something quick. So I went to Home Depot and just got some chains and hooks. And I did sort of like a curtain rod and it worked like a charm like i said guys i am a practical person where form meets function and i whatever i do is going to be easy for anybody else to do so if you guys have a shack or anything that you can put a couple of hooks on top and just put a, a strong rod in between 
you're good to go. Now, here I put a lot of my um, bigger hanging orchids and some that are in bloom, like, let me see, like this just opened. This is my um, golf, I always mess up the name, golf green hair pig, I think that's correct. And then of course, you guys have seen my Arachnus, uh, not Arachnus, Agrecum leones. Here's another beauty. See, I didn't want to lose any of these flowers. This is the majestic um, wild cat golden star. No, red golden star, I think it's called. It has a long name. <laughs> I just don't want to grab. Hold on, I could grab it. Because I know you guys are going to want to know and then I have to search for it and <laughs> oh actually I was very close uh wildcat golden red star there you go and I got that from Tang at Springwater all right I'm sorry I'm trying to handle this and stay warm at the same time and as you know my Rincon stylus chandelier that was the very first thing I brought in here and that I hooked on to my garage door um rail because it was just too heavy to put on that wood i only put on the wood by the way um vandas that were just um free hanging so that's pretty much it guys i mean there's not much i can show you guys in this bundle of botanical love <laughs> so my schimberkia the my one of my biggest ones which is blooming these beautiful beautiful flowers this is a Louise Fuchs um, Murmur Catley, I think. Or, oh, I always get that one wrong. You know, one someday. But anyways, it fit perfectly right there. I laid it right by the the cushion, and I'm sorry, I should have just done this. I laid it by the cushion, and you know, she's just laying there very, very comfortably. So this is pretty much it, guys. This is what I did, you know, and of course, I got these two awesome handy heaters at Home Depot. The reflective uh, heat, as you can see, it works with these coils and then it reflects out. I didn't want to get a fanned heat because I'm afraid it would have caused some damage on the leaves if it's blowing constant hot air. You know, this is the first time I do this, so I don't know and I have, you know, as you can see here, my encyclias are spiking and I didn't want them to get damaged. So, and I didn't even want to use the floor because I know the floor gets cold, but I had no more room. So I put my Bubba Films down there, which I know they can handle a little bit of cold weather and my Paphio Petalums, um, they don't mind a little cold and dampy. They can actually handle it better than most of my, of my orchids because of previous cold snaps we've had. They pretty much handle it well. So, yep, this is it. This is my collection inside a shack. <laughs> and I wish you can be here in person and see it. You, it, it. The photo flattens out the image a lot, so you can't really see it, but it's kind of cool to see the rows of Vandas. I feel like I own my own little botanical nursery. <laughs> it's just so different to see them like this. All right, let's go back to my little warm spot over there. All right, listen, I was gonna close the channel, but then I realized it's only fair to show you guys what I do have on my trees and how they held up overnight at low 30s uh, degrees. I mean, they look fine. I don't see any burns or Yeah, I don't, I don't see anything. I don't know. What do you guys think? I think they look great. Actually, in a weird way, they look better than I've see, ever seen them before. <laughs> I'm like puzzled of how crispy, colorful they look. Huh. Interesting. They've been on these trees. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's very early morning. And like I said, it's so cold out here. We're not used to this 
I feel it in my chest. Let me see, I wanna see. This is one that Laz gave to me. I guess it just opened. I love this one. I've had this one for years. He gave it to me on my birthday and it blooms constantly. It has two spikes, but see, I mean, everything looks really clean. The leaves look great. Yeah, I'm happy. They seem happy, right guys? Yeah, they're happy. I love this little area here. And here inside my terrace, when we're sitting in here, you can see them all from the outside when they're blooming and it's like a little paradise. So I guess the, the, the results of cold air, oh, here's another one. I've been cleaning these palm fronds because of the wind. The wind would, must have been so strong last night because when I got up early, it, there was palm fronds everywhere. And luckily, nothing got damaged. I have a orchid angel that looks over my collection. Yep, everything looks pretty, pretty good. I don't see, except for these, but this is normal for these, uh, I forgot what these are called. I cannot remember, these are so old. I've had, this was only like one, one of these that I got at the Redland Orchid Show. And this was when I first started getting like outside the box of dendrobiums and philonopsis. So I got this with Laz like five years ago, six years ago, no, five years ago. I would say about five years ago. And it's taken off and it blooms this beautiful little like pinkish and white. It's non fragrant. I have the, I have the anusmum on the other side. But uh, that one's not in fragrance, but it's so pretty. But yep, yeah, looks really good. I'm, I'm like amazed. I didn't even look at these in the morning. I just saw so many palm fronds. I was freaking out that it destroyed something. But unfortunately, I already see a damage here. This is Lewis's section. Hold on. This is our little pile of leaves and stuff that we then take to the dumpster. All right, so yeah, same thing. These these are, this is uh, Lewis's collection. He started his own little collection here. He got bit by the orchid bug, bug. but he likes the giant white philonopsis, the, the jumbo ones that I'll show you. They're really big <laughs> and they're very pretty. So I got him four more last week and um, we put them up with, we save these from like the vegetables and, and fruits where they come in. See, it hugs it really nice. And it lasts for a very long time. So it'll give it time to see, and then you knot it in the back, clip it off. It's airy, it doesn't, it doesn't, um, here, here's an orange one. It doesn't interfere with the, uh, with the growth and from my experience from the ones i have over there hanging that you guys already saw blooming this is how we did it but we use um we didn't use this back then we used just uh fishing wire it's horrible don't use that i mean you're you're ooh, look what i just saw there i'm telling you guys i think this was actually a positive thing for the philonopsis real positive thing so anyways i'm sorry don't ever use fishing wire because it'll cut through your roots and it'll damage it so i saw that one day and i said well this is like uh what do you call it ladies pantyhose which blanca uses and i use it and it works just as good all right so now i'm gonna exit out see you over there all right guys that is it short and sweet I hope you guys learned something from this. I hope it helps you guys with your with your orchid, especially my Florida 
uh, peeps that were not used to this cold weather. Um, I hope that this really helped you guys out uh, to keep your orchids safe. Remember, hashtag save the orchids. <laughs> so anyways, don't forget to subscribe. Um, I will see you in the next episode if you do. <laughs> My name is Nelson, you're watching Nature Now, and I'm under this nice crispy sun that's just coming out and it's feeling really nice because it feels like it's warming up a little bit. It was under the, it was 30, 33 degrees, the lowest last night. So that's not normal for us here in Miami. It just doesn't happen. So for someone like me who lived in the Midwest and I find this to be really cold, <laughs> it's a lot. So anyways, guys, thank you for sticking by. I will see you in the next episode. Remember to always keep it green.